today. After several close encounters, it finally happens for Blue Jay starter Dave Steve. Vancouver's first Molson Indy race is marred by an accident. And Ray Stewart tries for his first ever PGA win. Welcome to TSN Control in Toronto, everyone. This is Sports Desk, the early report. A very busy day for Canadian sports fans. Ray Stewart chasing his first PGA win in Milwaukee. The Molson Indy in downtown Vancouver. And a Labor Day Classic at Regina's Taylor Field. But first to baseball. The Toronto Blue Jays played game three of their weekend series in Cleveland this afternoon. Dave Steeb on the mound looking for his 17th win of the season. But as you're about to find out late in this game, Dave Steeb was looking for much more than just the win this afternoon. And here is a look at Dave Steeb on the mound for a very memorable afternoon in Cleveland. Bottom of the third, he will strike out Corey Snyder with a vicious breaking ball. Then Steve Tays, Joel Skinner looking. He struck out the side. There is no score after three complete. Top of the fourth, Fred McGriff launches one to left center. This one's gone for his 30th home run of the season. First of this game, he had another one. Jays in front, one nothing. Top of the fifth, Manny Lee doubles down the line in right. Kenny Williams scores from second base, and the Jays are now in front. It's 2-0. Back to Dave Steve. He continues to mow down the Indians. Watch here as he strikes out Deion James. Steve with the no-hitter through six complete innings. Dave Steve now anxiously awaiting the bottom of the ninth so he can pursue his first ever no-hitter. He has been so close before. Top of the ninth, Freddie McGriff does it again. McGriff unloads for his 31st home run of the year. Second of the game, Jays are now in front. It's 3-0. Bottom of the ninth we go now. Steve has the chance at the no-hitter. First batter of the inning is Chris James. James sends a lazy fly ball to left field. Glenn Allen Hill with the routine catch. That's one out. Next batter, Candy Maldonado. Steve strikes him out with some heat. He is now one out away. He has been this close before. He just couldn't do it. After an Alex Cole walk, Steve's next batter is Jerry Brown. Steve delivers. Brown hits a fly ball to right field. Junior Felix hauls it in. Finally, Dave Steve gets his no-hitter after a few chances. He has come so close in the past with two out in the ninth inning, and he has blown it before, but this time he finally does it. Dave Steve with the no-hitter over the Cleveland Indians. The final score in this one, 3-0 Toronto. I remember sitting here last time thinking the same thing, and I didn't want to jinx myself, but I'd already thought about it, so that was bad, and I just kept going at it like... Uh, it was the ninth anyway. I thought about that was seventh, and I went out there like it was the ninth. I did the same thing in the eighth, and in the ninth inning, I didn't want to make any bad kids and let them beat me on that, so uh, I was very careful with uh, Cole there, and um, luckily, luckily um, the last guy hit the ball right to the right fielder. The streets of downtown Vancouver were closed to the public this afternoon to make room for some of the fastest cars in the world. The first ever Vancouver Molson Indy is underway. It's under in progress right now. Two Canadians are entered in this race. They are Scott Goodyear from Toronto and Ross Bentley from Port Coquitlam, B.C. The pole position belonged to Michael Andretti, and there was some tragedy in this race. We'll get to that in a moment. The start of the first ever Vancouver Indy went without a problem. Pole sitter Michael Andretti holding on to the early lead. But the trouble starts in lap number 16, and this was tragic. Ross Bentley's car is stalled. Three track attendants come out to push him. Willie T. Ribbs comes around the corner, and watch out. He hits all three workers. All three taken to hospital. One has a broken jaw, another a broken ankle. The third, much more serious, he was run over. Information not available about him at this time. Halfway through the race, it's Al Unser Jr. After his fourth straight Indy win, he is leading, but Michael Andretti passes him to move into the lead in this race. But soon after Andretti has trouble with his exhaust pipe, he goes into the pits. It's all over for Michael Andretti on this day. That allows Al Unser Jr. to move back into the lead, and he continues to lead at this point in the race. And if possible, we will try and update you on the condition of the uh, three injured people at the Molson Indy before we let you go on Sports Desk. Uh, we uh, hope for the best. Sports Desk returns in just a moment. Stomach troubles. They can blow in like an ocean storm, bringing heartburn or upset stomach or even diarrhea. That's why you should always...
always have Pepto-Bismol on board. Pepto's special triple action coating formula goes to work quickly to cool heartburn, calm upset stomach, and relieve diarrhea with a layer of effective soothing pink medication. Pepto-Bismol's triple action coating formula turns tummy troubles into smooth sailing. This car has the lowest price in its class. So it's not an Accord. It has the most powerful standard engine in its class. So it's not a 626. Its equipment leaves nothing to be desired. So it's not a Camry. Now that you know what it isn't, it's time you knew what it is. It's the new Nissan Stanza. Every year they hit the books and study hard. CIAU football on TSN. TSN has a class of nine battling their way throughout the year for a bid at the national championship. TSN has a full season of college ball, including playoff finals and all the excitement that is the Vanier Cup. It's CIAU football as the Waterloo Warriors take on the Concordia Singers Saturday, 1 Eastern and here on TSN. The Oakland A's were five and a half games up on the Chicago White Sox coming into action this afternoon. The Chai Sox were looking to wrap up a three-game sweep of the California Angels. We'll get to that game in just a moment. But first, the A's against the Texas Rangers. The Rangers snapped a four-game losing streak with their win yesterday against Oakland. They sent knuckleballer Charlie Huff to the mound this afternoon. Let's see what happened in this game. We have a score in the eighth inning. It is Oakland leading Texas. The score right now is 4-2. Now let's move on to Anaheim. Doug Rader and his Angels hosting the Chai Sox this afternoon. There is a look at the coach. Top of the fifth, Scott Fletcher slaps a fly ball to right field. Dave Winfield tracks it down. Carlton Fisk will move in from third base. Winfield with the throw, and it's a beauty. Gets him at home plate. Fisk is out. Great toss by the veteran. Bottom of the fifth, Jack Howell ends the scoreless draw, cracking the solo home run, the seventh home run of the season for him. Angels lead 1-0, and that was all that the... Uh, Angels would need in this game. That was the final score. 1-0, California defeating Chicago. Jack Howell with the home run. White Sox lost for the first time in six games at Arlington Stadium. The Angels have won six of their last eight games. It was uh, Minnesota downing Detroit 4-3 this game in Minneapolis. Scott Erickson getting the win. Jack Morris took the loss for Detroit. In Milwaukee, the Brewers down the Orioles 4-2. Jaime Navarro getting the win. Jose Mesa taking the loss. And in the seventh inning, it is Kansas City up on Seattle to the tune of 7-0. Okay, to the National League now. The Montreal Expos trying to wrap up a three-game sweep of the Los Angeles Dodgers at Olympic Stadium. They sent rookie Mark Gardner to the mound this afternoon, despite the fact that he was nursing a sore pitching arm. Now, the gamble for the Expos, starting Gardner, cost them early in this one. Lenny Harris leads off for the Dodgers, lifting a high fly ball to right. Larry Walker, the Canadian, goes back, jumps, but no, no chance. It's over the wall. Second home run of the season for Harris. 1-0 Dodgers. Still in top of the first. Dodgers leading 3-0. L.A. throws the bases on Gardner. And pitcher Jim Neidlinger knocks a hit through the box. Eddie Murray scores. It's now 4-0 L.A. Gardner is through for the day, giving up four hits, four runs, all of which were earned over two and a third innings. Top of the fourth now. Dodgers up 4-1 until Cal Daniels booms his shot to right field. Two-run homer off Mel Roja. Number 20 on the season for Daniels. It's now 6-1 L.A. Later in the same inning, former Blue Jay. Mike Sharperson takes Roja over the wall. Again, another two-run shot for the Dodgers. They score four in the inning, 8-1 L.A. at this point. Top of the fifth, Dodgers leading 9-2. Dale Mahorsic tries to put out the fire on the Dodger bats. Daniels <laughs> comes up again. Second two-run homer of the game. Good night, Irene. 11-2, the score at that point. Dodgers hold on to win it. The final score is 12-5 over Montreal. The Dodgers had 18 hits in this game. Harris, Daniels, and Sharperson with home runs. Of course, Daniels had two home runs in this game. Wallach had a home run his 18th of the season for Montreal. 
Now on to Shea Stadium in New York. Roger Craig in town to battle the Mets. Him and his Giants. Top of the first. Kevin Mitchell gets the ball rolling. Singles to left. Two Giants uh, players come around the bases to score. Giants take the early 2-0 lead. Now bottom of the fifth inning with the Giants leading 4-2. Tim Tuffle. Solo home run to left. Kiss this one goodbye off rookie starter Paul McClellan. His eighth home run of the season makes it 4-3 San Francisco. Now just a few batters later, it's tied at four. Mackie Satcher. Pinch hits with runners in scoring position. And he delivers in the clutch. Daryl Strawberry and Howard Johnson score. It's now 6-4 Mets. We move to the bottom of the eighth now. Hojo, Howard Johnson at the plate. Base is drunk. He lines the shot into the gap. The double clears the bags. The Mets lead 10-6 at this point. They go on to win this game by that same score. The Giants, by the way, have lost four in a row and six of their last seven games. David Cohn gets the win, his 11th of the season. Paul McClellan is 0-1. Alejandro Pena came in for his fourth save of the season. Next, Art Howe and his Astros trying to pin another win on the Bucks. Here, top of the first, Andy Van Slyke rips a double down the right field line. Wally Backman scores all the way from first base. And he's 1-0 Bucks. Bottom of the fifth inning, John Smiley is rolling along for Pittsburgh. Here he strikes up. Franklin Stubb is looking. Astros have no hits through five innings. Top of the fifth. Now Pirates are leading 2-0. Jeff King finally gives the lead a shot in the arm, cranking a three-run homer. It's 5-0. Last of the sixth inning we go. Astros trailing 5-1. Rafael Ramirez bloops one to right. Three bucks move in for the coverage. No one gets it, though. It goes off Jose Lynn's glove. Eric Yelding scores five, two bucks at that point. They cruise on to win this game. Houston made it close, 7-6. The final score, it's only the Pirates' second win in their last eight games. It was Cincinnati over Chicago, 6-2. Jose Rio scattered eight hits to get the win. Get the win. Jack Black with his 21st home run, powering San Diego past Philadelphia, 9-1. And Atlanta over St. Louis, 5-0, the final score in the... Well, seeing a Canadian in the lead heading into the final round of a major golf tournament is something you don't see very often. The last time that a Canadian won a major tournament was back in 1987. Cave Bar won the Atlantic Classic that year. Well, this afternoon, Ray Stewart from Vancouver carried a three-stroke lead into the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open. Oops, is a comfortable lead, but the question was, how would Stewart handle the pressure of being the leader on the final day of a major golf tournament. The cameras were focused on the Canadian when play started this afternoon. Stewart chips from the rough on 16, leaves it just short. He would later make birdie to drop to 17 under par. Ed Doherty comes from out of nowhere to make a charge. He sings this putt on 18. Doherty stays at 17 under par. Jim Gallagher Jr. is in contention. Watch this approach shot on 15. Gallagher would make the uh, birdie to fall to 17 under and a chance at the championship. Ray Stewart has a chance to move into a four-way tie and go to a playoff hole on 18. He misses the long putt though, finishes the tournament at 16 under par. The Canadian is up. If Billy Mayfair can sink this putt on 18, he will win the Greater Milwaukee Open. Mayfair leaves it just short and we are headed for a playoff. Gallagher and Mayfair and Doherty. First playoff hole. Gallagher drains this putt and puts the pressure on Mayfair and Doherty. After Mayfair missed his putt, it was up to Doherty. He must make this putt. Doherty rolls it wide. Jim Gallagher, Jr., wins the Greater Milwaukee Open, and you have to give a lot of credit to the Canadian race to it. He finishes one stroke off the pace, along with a couple other golfers. Jim Gallagher, Jr., is the winner in a playoff hole at the Greater Milwaukee Open. As for the other Canadians involved, Jerry Anderson finished at 11 under par, not too bad at all. Dave Barr and Richard Jokel were both well back. To football now and as long as I can remember, there's always been a healthy rivalry between the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. That rivalry always seems to heat up this weekend, the Labor Day weekend. Bus loads of Winnipeg fans make the trek to Regina to join the loud <laughs> field crowd. Former Saskatchewan quarterback Tom Burgess was expected to start for the Bombers against his former teammates, but many Winnipegers felt that Winnipeg backup Danny McManus deserved a shot after a song, strong performance Tuesday in that win against Calgary. A huge crowd on hand at Taylor Field today. 31,000. The seating capacity is just 27. Those who couldn't get a ticket were on top of their houses. Out of the game now. First one tied at three. Ball on the Saskatchewan three-yard line. Ken Austin Ross drops back. It's Jeff Fairholm. And he is gone. Scampers in touchdown, 107 yards. It's 10-3 riders. 
still in the first quarter. Kent Austin again. This time he finds Don Mar Narcisse. And four yards out, 17-3 Saskatchewan. And the crowd loved it. They were pumped up. And so was the green team, especially their defense. Down goes Tom Burgess on the play. Given the sack by Bobby Jurison, still 17-3 riders at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter now, riders kept rolling. First, it's Austin to Mark Guy for another major. That made the score 34-10. The fans love it. And we're finished there. Again, Kent Austin. He finds Don Narcisse. Open up the middle. Beautiful catch by Narcisse. Saskatchewan up 41-10 at the half. In the second half, Rough Riders keep it coming. Even backup quarterback. Jeff Bentra got into the action. Saskatchewan leading 48-11. Bentra hits Lucius Floor, 23 yards out. That made it 55 to 11. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders go on to route the Bombers. Look at the final score in this one, 55-11 at Taylor Field. And I spoke earlier about great rivalries in the Canadian Football League. Here is another one for you. The Edmonton Eskimos against the Calgary Stampeders. They will meet Labor Day Monday at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. And this one should be a dandy as well. First place in the CFL West Division is on the line. The Stamps are currently number one with five wins and a tie. The Eskimos second with five wins and three losses. Now keep in mind, Calgary is coming off that tough overtime loss to Winnipeg last Tuesday. But as our Peter Watts reports from Calgary, the Stampeders are doing their best to put the loss behind them. It says something about the new attitude in Calgary this season that there was no pointing fingers, no blaming of others following the loss in Winnipeg last Tuesday night. It was a tough one to lose, a tough way to lose it, but, uh, you know, I think we showed a lot of poise in coming back the way we did, and, you know, just, just a couple of plays made the difference, and, you know, there really wasn't any way to point the finger at any particular person. Well, it's a team effort. You win as a team, you lose as a team, and uh, you don't worry about what happens in the game. Mark might miss a field goal, but that means nothing. The offense didn't score the points when they had to, and the defense didn't stop them, so we move on to the next game as a team. Now comes the big test. Two games in five days against arch-rival Edmonton. Last time these two teams met, the Eskimos won 46-20, to 20, and Tracy Ham was on top. Third walker, we got to hit. We got to take take the play to them and not stand back and let them come at us. We got to get on top of them right away. Uh, Edmonton are a good team when they get ahead of you. You know, then they'll just keep pouring it on. Um, if we get ahead of them, I think we might uh, confuse them a little bit. Uh, our offense can do the job and our defense can do the job, and then we have two special teams to go in there and you know give uh, the offense good field position. So we just have to come out and be ready to play. Uh, Right, right from this kickoff. The guy can kill you throwing it, he can kill you running it, so why not make him do it by and uh, not let him do both? So far this season, the first quarter has been the worst quarter for the Calgary Stampeders. The team has scored just 32 points while giving up 58. And that record of futility will have to end if the Stampeders are to improve on a record of 1-17 and against the Green and Gold. Peter Watts, TSN, in Calgary. Thank you, Peter. And the Arlington Million was run this afternoon in Arlington, Texas. Last year's Canadian Triple Crown winner with approval was one of the favorites in this race. The race finished as called by track announcer Davey Johnson. Classic fame is gaining ground on the outside court. Ten feet safe ground at the rail. And pleasant uh, golden pheasant from between horses is next. Now they move to the top of the stretch. And it's double hooked holding on to the lead by a hit. But here comes with approval. It's great for us on the outside. Here's a look at the final tote board. Golden Pheasant owned by Wayne Gretzky and Bruce McNall. The Kings, the winner, paying 15 20 and 440 Canadian. With approval was second, followed by Steinlin in show position. Time for another quick break. Still to come on Sports Test, we'll have uh, a word from the legend, Dr. J. Football legend, of course, and highlights from day seven of the U.S. Open Tennis Tournament. Stay with us. This and more when we come back. Time now for the Coors Light Trivia Challenge. And by the Silver Bullet. Coors Light, the right beer. What pitcher holds the Cleveland Indians record for wins in career? The answer in a moment.
What pitcher holds the Cleveland Indians record wins in a career? Bob Feller holds the record for most career victories for the Tribe with 266. Coors Light, right here now. When a French croissant marries an Italian pizza, imagine the passionate combination of texture and taste. McKay Micro Croissant Pizza. Delicate and tender, yet zest and flavor. Let this texture and this taste that McCain has joined together, let no one put us under. McCain Microwave Croissant Pizza. Texture and taste in perfect harmony. I'm not the kind of guy to mess with my hair, and I'm sure not going to mess with shampoo and conditioner. So I found an easy way to get my hair the way I want it. Flawless. It's simple. It's complete shampoo, plus complete conditioner, and one bottle. I just wash my hair, plus leaves it clean, conditioned, and easy to manage. So you don't need two bottles of stuff. With Perk Plus... You should eat oatmeal raisin crisps, too. I already eat too many things that are good for me. Oh. Oatmeal raisin crisps. The new whole grain oats and crisp flakes, plus the delicious taste. Raisins are oh, another touch of bread. Oh, another ball. Don't try that all in one day, Mom. When you've been burnt candle at bottom and can't get to sleep, Occasional fuckers in the with night all single trust to be reading it. Wake up feeling well rested and alert. Night all. It's not just a rivalry, more like a war. When Calgary comes to town, it's a town. In Alberta, 65% of football fans prefer the taste of Diet 7-Up. We like to taste the Diet 7-Up. You got a problem with that? With the cow, nothing in common. Challenge your taste. Crunch these numbers. When does 501 or 531 equal 3388? When they're Levi's Red Jabs permit. 30 years of fears, your money's worth, and more.